In this video, we'll show how to use Glycan Reader and Modeler to prepare a system with GP160, which is the glycoprotein precursor to the HIV envelope protein. Before starting this example, you should be aware that the front page of Glycan Reader and Modeler has notes that can help resolve most of the errors you are likely to encounter. Glycan Reader and Modeler is embedded in PDB Reader, so it is available in most other modules such as Solution Builder and Membrane Builder. Thus, to build a solution system with a glycoprotein like GP160, we need to use Solution Builder. The PDB ID we need for this example is 5FYL. To see what it looks like, download its structure from RCSB and open it in a visualization program like VMD or Pymol. GP160 is synthesized from a dimer consisting of a transmembrane protein, GP41, and a surface protein, GP120, which are both heavily glycosylated. GP160 then combines into a trimer that mediates receptor binding and membrane fusion. Note that the GP41 transmembrane domain is truncated in this structure. In addition to the envelope protein, this PDB file also contains antibodies that interact with the envelope protein, which we will remove in this example. As shown here, this PDB structure contains only one copy of the trimeric envelope protein, so we need to generate the remaining two copies in the PDB manipulation step. Start by going to Solution Builder. Type 5FYL and click Next. On this page, glycan segments are indented and are listed under the protein segment they are attached to. We're not interested in the antibodies, so we'll deselect them. The antibody protein chain names are B, C, E, and F. Make sure that you also deselect carbohydrate N, which is attached to chain E. Then go to the next step. CharmGUI automatically detects missing residues and disulfide bonds in the structure. If you scroll down, you can see all of the identified glycan chains. In the next video, we will learn how to edit them, but for now we'll leave them unchanged. Since we want to generate the biological trimeric envelope protein, we need to click the option for generation of a functional unit. This option will use the matrix information in the PDB file to generate the remaining two copies of the envelope protein. Now go to the next step. We should check that the glycans were built correctly by clicking View Structure. Now we can set up a few options for our solution system. Since we have flexible glycans, it would be better to increase the edge distance, that is, the distance from the protein edge to the box edge, to 15 angstroms. Since we modified the system size, we need to recalculate the number of ions. Because we don't need specific DNA or RNA ion interactions, we should change the ion placing method to distance, since the Monte Carlo method takes a much longer time. Now go to the next step to build the water box, generate ions, and assemble all components. Due to the large size of this system, it will take about 15 minutes to do this step. In the next step, we don't need to change anything, so just go to the next step to set up the periodic boundary conditions. This step includes a small number of minimization steps, which may take about 6-7 to seven minutes. If you're interested in running your simulations using NAMD or OpenMM, you can select them. Otherwise, we don't need to change any of the other options, so we can click Next Step to finalize the system building and input generation. Because Solution Builder generates all of the necessary restraint files for non-charm programs, it will take about three minutes. When it finishes, you can download your project directory. You should check Step 3 ppcsetup.pdb. Then you can read the README file in the directory of each of the program names you selected in order to run equilibration and production.